Ben Gertzel here. Welcome to the next iteration of the general theory of general intelligence. And this is going to be a brief one because what I'm going to talk about this time is completely useless, totally and utterly useless uh, of no value whatsoever. Well, at least of, of no direct value. What I'm going to talk about are some universal algorithms for general intelligence, by which I mean algorithms that are almost optimally generally intelligent according to some reasonable definitions of, of what it is to be generally intelligent. And that sounds like a very useful thing, but the catch is these super powerful AGI algorithms that are almost optimally generally intelligent by some reasonable if incomplete definitions. These algorithms would be too computationally expensive to implement. Like you can't, you can't implement them uh, on any computer we have now, probably not even on any computer or physical system you could build in the physical universe. So why am I gonna waste a few minutes of your time telling you about these <clears throat> pragmatically useless universal algorithms? Well, it's because, you know, they're, first of all, they're cool and interesting math. They, they, that you can prove nice theorems about them. You can prove that if you could build them, they would fulfill these definitions of general intelligence quite well. But more importantly than that, they do help frame the problem of AGI in a certain way. And then you can look at some practical AGI systems as in a way, specializations of these maximally general systems. So yeah, let me, let me plunge into the particulars. We're going to talk here about universal algorithms for AGI. Uh, the first of the two I'm going to present is called uh, AXI, AIXI. And I, I, I like this name. Actually, my, my fourth child, my three-year-old son, his middle name includes the AXI. So his first name is Quarksi, Q-O-R-X-I, Quantum Organized Rational Expanding Intelligence. His middle name is Exiphanes, A-I-X-I-P-H-A-N-E-S, which means the, the sort of force or principle behind, behind AXC. And the idea underlying AXC and, and AXC TL, which is an approximation to AXC that is not uncomputable and impossible to implement like AXC, but it is, is only infeasible to, to implement the the basic idea behind these is a, a pretty simple one and a beautiful one, even though the mathematics is, is, is kind of hairy. So, I mean, I mentioned in the last video in my book in 1991, The Structure of Intelligence, I, I talked about the, a definition of general intelligence being the ability of a system to achieve complex goals in, in, in complex in, in environments, which is in the same spirit as Leg and Hooder's more rigorous and thoroughly mathematically fleshed out definition of, of general in, in intelligence as uh, you know the the sort of weighted average ability to achieve computable reward functions in computable environments where the weighting is by the universal distribution. Similarly, in, in structure of intelligence, I, I explored some computationally infeasible algorithms for being really, really good at achieving complex goals in complex environments, and then tried to look at how you would specialize and simplify them to make them more human-like and, and, and more feasible to do. So, AXC and XCTL are along those same lines, but you know more rigorous and better fleshed out mathematically than what I did in in structure of intelligence. What 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 Marcus Hutter tries to do here is take his definition of general intelligence in terms of the ability to, on average do really well achieving any computable reward function in any computable environment and articulate an algorithm that can do that 
almost as well as any other algorithm. And how do you do it? Well, the idea is actually pretty simple. What, what AXE does, very roughly speaking, is in between each perception it receives and each action that it takes, it looks at every possible computer program. Then it says, well, if I'd been running this program in the past, how well would I have done at getting reward? And then it takes the smallest program, which would have given it the maximum performance in the past if it had been running this program, and uses that optimal program to take the next step. And how does it guess whether that program would have given it the maximum reward in the past? Well, it can just run, run a whole bunch of simulations over the past, and it can do optimal probabilistic Bayesian reasoning over, over, over the past. Now, that's not feasible to implement because there's an infinite space of possible computer programs. And part of this algorithm is in between each perception and each action, you have to look at the space of all possible computer programs and say like, based on my perceptions up to date, how well would I have done if I'd been running that computer program? Now the, the idea of AXETL is you do the same thing, but you restrict the search over all possible programs to programs that have runtime less than some number t and <clears throat> length less than some number l. So in between each perception and each action, you're searching the space of all possible programs with runtime less than t and length less than l. And, and, then, and then you're asking in, in, in this finite but huge space of computer programs, which of these programs would have done me the best in terms of optimizing reward in the past if I'd run it and, and is also very small. And of all the of all the smallest problems that would have done the best for me in history, I'll use that one to choose my next action, right? So, I mean, that's completely infeasible to implement in practice, does give a way to think about practical AGI algorithms. I mean, you could start to think, well, maybe a practical AGI algorithm is like this, but instead of searching the space of all possible programs in between each perception and action, you're just uh, searching, you're sampling that space and doing a smarter search of just parts of the space of programs. And the, there are concrete approximations like Monte Carlo AXC that are, that are like that, right? So they, they take a judiciously chosen sample from the space of all, of all possible programs. And, 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 and then uh, they use the smallest near optimal program they found in that, in that sample that, that would have done the best over their past history to choose choose their next action. I mean, so one route to try to build real AGI systems is to try to try to actually scale down AXE into something feasible using ideas like Monte Carlo. AXE, I'm not that optimistic that will work. I, I'm sort of looking at these algorithms a bit a bit more loosely and uh, as something that can, you know, inspire and have <clears throat> parallels to practical AGI algorithms rather than literally taking the formalism of AXE and trying to scale it down into something practical. But I mean, that, that's an interesting approach. I'm glad that Marcus and, and some of the, his, uh, his students are working on that. You know, why this sort of algorithm is almost optimal at being generally intelligent in, in the sense of optimizing computable reward functions should be relatively clear, right? Because since, since the AXE algorithm <clears throat> is sampling all other programs, if there was some other program that was better than it, it would sample that program and just run that program. And with AXETL, you know, the, the runtime and, and length of AXETL is, is, is gonna be, it's gonna be longer than L and take longer to run than, than 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 t so it, it it may you know it, it it's not encompassed in the in the search that it does when, when it's when it searches over over all programs of of length less than or equal to l and runtime less than or equal to t it's it's not it's not necessarily finding axetl in there because axetl should take long, longer than than t to run for 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 example but still you know, it's a big program and it's searching over a whole lot of other big programs. And so as, 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 as n, n goes to infinity, what, we, what you find is one of the programs that it's searching in general is gonna do 
almost almost as well as 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 it as it would do. And so Marcus Hunter has worked out some very beautiful proofs about this. You can find in his book Universal AI. An alternate approach that's quite similar, but not exactly the same. It's on the realm of declarative logic rather than than probabilistic program learning is Jürgen Schmidhuber's uh, Gordel machine. And uh, Schmidhuber and Hutter worked together at uh, at IDSIA in, in Lugano, which is also where Shane Legg was, was Hutter's PhD student. Schmidhuber's Gordel machine looks an AGI system that has a theorem prover operating according to a certain formal logic. And in this case, between each perception coming in and before each action is, is, is determined, the system tries to do a formal proof using its logic to prove that taking a certain action will will give it better expected reward than, than any other action. And you know the actions it, it can take may include internal actions, up, up, updating its its knowledge base and, and deriving new conclusions that, 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 that it can use in, in its in its following reasoning. So it's sort of the same thing as AXC at a very broad philosophical level, but you're using a logic engine to prove what is your best next action rather than making a sort of probabilistic estimate of which program were you to execute it would give you the best next action. There's a lot of mappings in computer science between uh, programs and proofs and what one expects you could use some of these Curry Howard correspondences to sort of map Gordel machines in, in, into uh, into AXE type algorithms. I, I haven't explore, explored that math, but uh, somebody somebody should. You can go further in the, in this in this direction. I think I'm not going to talk about it too much here, but it's 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 in some papers you can find in my archive. I mean, you can you can try to ask how. Will these infinitely powerful or nearly infinitely powerful but infeasible to implement AGI algorithms? Like, how will they represent knowledge internally? And you can look at things like algorithmic Markov processes and properties like maximum algorithmic caliber that, that, that in, in, in a way, tell you what sorts of thoughts and knowledge structures should be occurring. Uh, inside these maximally intelligent systems. But uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's enough for now. So the, these are extremely interesting algorithms and will be very, very useful if you had infinitely powerful computers or nearly infinitely powerful computers, but, but we don't. So, I mean, we can prove nice, nice theorems about these approaches. And then the, the next step, if we're gonna make any use of these things is the next step is to figure out you know, how could you take the core concepts involved with these algorithms and somehow specialize them into something that you could you could actually implement and that will that will be the that will be the topic of the of the next the next talk in the series.